right, folks, I'll let that reverb trail away. And while it's doing so, let's reflect on what this is. We saw this debuted at NAMM 2020, and finally, over a year later, it's arrived. I don't need to introduce this guitar, but I will do anyway. It's the Custom Shop replication of George Harrison's Rocky Stratocaster. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I know any more than any of the Beatles experts out there. Undoubtedly, there will be many in the comments section on this video. So if you do know a lot about this guitar, I would like to know. I'd like to know all those details that have been concealed from the kind of mainstream uh, outlets of what this guitar actually is. I want to know all the details that you guys know. So let me know in the comments. But what I know is Paul Waller, the guy who was behind the first of the Harrison kind of replications of that Rosewood Telecaster a few years ago, uh, he was commissioned to do the Rocky Strat as well. And if anyone knows about that first issue of that, that Telecaster, they were incredibly hard to come by, really, really desirable. It was such an iconic guitar. I think in the Fender introduction for that guitar, they listed that as probably the most influential and iconic Telecaster in history. And I'm sure that to a lot of people, this Strat is going to be right up there too. Now, to me, I wasn't as familiar with this guitar. So it was interesting, like I said, just reading a little bit about it but it's really scratching the surface. There's a lot of Beatles fanatics out there that will know every little detail and will know by studying this guitar, if you look at the pictures and you look at the videos and the other bits of media that, that Fender have put out, you'll know that they really left no stone unturned with this thing, as they always do with the custom shop. But when it comes to the Beatles, when it comes to just the iconic stature of these instruments and what they were used for and how important they are to people's lives, it's a huge world of difference. And to know that Fender kind of got one of their very best guys on the job to do it, enlisting the help of Abby as well. She came back out of retirement to make these pickups for this guitar. So it's just loads of these little details that go into this product being way larger than the sum of its individual parts. Its historical merit is dead on. And like I said, if you know about this guitar, you know the history of this thing, you're going to be pretty excited to know that the custom shop have done a great job of bringing it back to life. Okay, so there's a couple of topics I want to address with this guitar. I'm not going to give a full overview because if you want to if you want to hear the history of it and kind of the, the work that went into all the details, Fender have made great videos on that. A few other people have as well. So what I want to get across, two things. One, how this thing plays and how it sounds. And number two is going to be obviously kind of the elephant in the room of the sheer amount of money this guitar costs, who is it actually going to be for? So let's talk about the first thing. This sounds amazing. It's an amazing sounding 61 Strat. That's what this guitar originally was. I believe Harrison bought the guitar in 65 and had all this done to it, or did it himself. All the paint in 67, I think. Again, Beatles fans, get in the comments and let me know. But for a 61 Strat, you know, I've played a bunch of great custom shop replications of those guitars, played a couple of old 60s Strats, and it's got that vibe to it. The master builders always seem to know what to do with the feel of the neck, the way that it feels nice and smooth on the edges, there's none of that roughness to the frets. And then, obviously this has the Abbey pickup magic. If you don't know, Abbey was one of the original pickup builders and winders in the, way back in the 60s, when this, the original guitar would have been made. And she came out of retirement to do these pickups for this guitar, as she did with the Rosewood Telecaster as well. And there's just there's some kind of touch that went into the electronics and the feel of all the wood components on this guitar as well. It just feels like a classic 60s Strat, as you would expect, but as is often overlooked in certain regards. And if you haven't played a bunch of them, then you know you, you may not necessarily discern these differences, but I can say safely this is one of the best playing and sounding 60s Strats that I've ever had the opportunity to play. Obviously, it's not a real one, but it pays good tribute and homage to the original one. So that's kind of, you know, that's its credit as an instrument. However, the second thing I wanted to talk about here goes beyond it being an instrument. And this is a wider discussion. It's something that a lot of people are very interested in, is that instruments like this are not for every guitar player out there. And it's not the kind of thing that you would pick up and just have a go on. You know, um, this is really for huge enthusiasts of this instrument, of this instrument's story and of its legacy. And so when you get into this realm, it does become very interesting because it suddenly becomes art and it becomes about these historical artifacts and people are basically custodians for these things. These guitars are in very limited numbers. This is not something that's gonna be a huge production run or anything like that. 
very limited guitar, and that just makes it super special. And I think if you are the kind of person who enthuses about the history of instruments, and you love breaking down the details of things and studying where things came from, the kind of anthropology of guitars, if you will, specific guitars as well, like this, I think it's very, very interesting. And once you get into that realm, it's not for the casual guitar player, I suppose, but if you're lucky enough to have the funds for an instrument like this, then it really delivers on all those expectations of, you know, you can tell that the people at Fender just want to do their very best to authenticate those original instruments and bring them back and bring them back to life in very limited runs like this. And that's what they've done. So, you know, there is always going to be that contentious debate. And let me know in the comments what you think about the kind of instruments of this, of this price and this caliber. And, you know, what does it mean to you? Would you ever spend that much on an instrument if you can? But it goes beyond being an instrument is what I'm trying to say. It's just a cool piece of history, a cool reference to a point in history. And for such an iconic band as the Beatles and such an iconic musician, it really is one of the highest honors that any musical instrument company could hope to adorn their product line with. So that's kind of a bit about the Rocky. You heard it in the introduction. It sounds great, it plays great. Whether you think it looks great, objectively, is gonna be down to you. I think it's very much a subjective thing, and if you've got, like I said, if you've got the reverence for the history of this instrument and what it represented for music, it's pretty much unparalleled, I think. You know, it's up there with Hendrix's Psychedelic V, and very, very few other instruments have this kind of caliber to it. But it's, like I said, it's more than the sum of its parts, but the parts that go into it are actually pretty special as well. I haven't talked about the neck, which is this really nice flamey bird's eye. I believe there was quite an extensive process for Paul Waller to get the right pieces of wood for the aesthetics of the neck. Um, so that's had a lot of thought gone into it. I also like the fact, being from Maidstone myself, that it says Maidstone on the headstock, which is a connection I never thought I would be able to make with a Beatles instrument, but I believe that was the chain of stores that Harrison bought the guitar from originally. So that's a little cool artifact as well to it. So it's one of those things you've really got to scratch way beneath the surface and find out all of the history that goes into an instrument like this, and that's exactly what Fender have done. And if you would like to scratch even further than I am doing today, then click the link in the description below, head to our website, you can check out the listing where all the photos of these instruments will be, there's plenty of information there uh, from Fender themselves and you know you can really dive deep into this thing. And like I said, if you are one of those lucky few who will be able to splash the cash on this thing, then you will be buying a legitimate piece of modern history, which is pretty cool. So there we go, I think I'll play you out, show you some more of these cool tones. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you leave a like down below if you've enjoyed this. Like I said, I do want to open up this debate a little bit about what you think of instruments of this kind. So let me know in the comments your thoughts Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Have a great day, take care, and I'll see you next time.